Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. The Apostle Peter at the conclusion of his first letter instructs us, cast all your anxiety, cast all your care on him, on Jesus, because he cares for you. My daughter Ruth Lang now sings, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word in order to find the answers. Question number one, who is the great Babylon of Revelation chapter 17 and verse five? Here in chapter 17, we are drawing towards the conclusion of the pages of Revelation and that which was drawn back so that John the Apostle there on Patmos might catch a glimpse of things to come. And here it is the doom of Babylon. Babylon is, has this Babylon, the great Babylon, many, even as some have set dates and they have sought to, to understand exactly who the Antichrist is, here also many have sought unsuccessfully to identify a particular point on this globe which is to be identified as this. But I want to emphasize to you that this is a rebellious spirit. It is a wicked city. It is a place where God has no part and God is pronouncing a doom upon Babylon the Great. Now, there are innumerable places all around the world and all through history which have raised themselves up in defiance of God, places large and small and to various degrees in their rebellion have raised their fist against God and said, we will have nothing to do with you. God has yet been working out his purposes in those places and receiving glory to himself. 
Now, here in the great Babylon, this preeminent place in human history and at the culmination of time, God is about to receive to himself, even in the most wicked place of all, glory and honor as he takes his throne and as those who have exalted themselves are cast down. Verse 5 of Revelation chapter 17, on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, key word, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Yet this one would be judged, this one who thought, all of them who thought that they were beyond the judgment of God, that they could somehow collaborate and that they could raise themselves up over against the saints and over against the witness of Jesus. And yet we read, continue to read, don't stop reading early in chapter 17, beginning in verse 14. These will wage war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, because He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with Him are the called and chosen and faithful. Question number two. Are Spy Wednesday or Maundy Thursday mentioned in the Bible? These are terms, the term Maundy Thursday, I've heard that one for a long time. Spy Wednesday is one that just recently I've become acquainted with. These are terms which are not found in the sacred page, yet they have been used in order to identify movements toward the cross during Holy Week. Just as we have Palm Sunday and the, the reflection or the remembrance is that those who welcomed Jesus took palm branches and waved them. Palm Sunday is simply a good moniker. It's, it's a good earmark of what we remember. Spy Wednesday, not recorded in the scriptures as that, but it is that time when Judas went to the leadership and made a bargain with them for 30 pieces of silver that he would betray Jesus. And Judas, as an inner spy within the disciples' band, he starts to look for an opportunity whereby he might betray Jesus over into their hands and into their keeping. Maundy Thursday, Maundy coming from the Latin, which means commandment. Here it is when Jesus met with his disciples for the last time just before he would go to the cross, the day before his his crucifixion. Jesus there washing his disciples' feet and giving them that new commandment, this new commandment I give you, that you love one another and impressing that upon them. So the very words or the very names that we have given to these things, not in the sacred page, but yet they are useful in reminding us of those stepping stones toward the cross, toward the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and of him dying for you and for me. And each and every one of them speaks of the grace of God, the loving kindness of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the plan of God, which reaches out so generously to each and every one of us. If you have a question, for the Bible has the answer, please send it to us and we will use it as best as we are able. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Let me remind you that on our website, the full text of these questions is to be found, and you may go there at any time should you want to 
read once again what you have just heard. Heidi, Ruth, Matt come singing, learning to lean, and that is followed by the full group singing, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart.
as an extension of the ministry which we carry out on radio and television week by week, Faith to Live By also makes available all of our audio recordings. We have been talking about this new CD, God So Loved the World, 13 songs of blessing. I know that you will enjoy them thoroughly. Among these 13 are songs such as His Name Lives On, Have You Any Room for Jesus, Pass Me Not, Jesus, paid it all, saved by grace. Now I belong to him. All of our resources, books, or CDs are always sent out free and postage paid simply upon your request. Ask for this brand new CD, God So Loved the World, when you write to us this week at Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call us Toll free, 1-833-367-3852. Also, our website, faithtoliveby.ca, has a means of you requesting a copy to be sent, mailed to you, or you can immediately download, again at no charge, the audio files from this and other CD projects that we have done, and you may have it right away to your tablet, your phone, or to your computer for your blessing. Just before our message, we have from this new CD project, a song sung by Rick and Matt, Draw Me Nearer. All who love their Bibles know well Isaiah chapter 53 and the vision, the clear vision that Isaiah had from 700 years away of the Messiah and what his character would be like and how that he would suffer and the purpose for that suffering. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, he was pierced through for our transgressions. It was not because he had stumbled. It was not because he had fallen into sin. It was not even because he had the taint of sin. 
He was pure. He was undefiled. He was that Lamb of God that was to be brought to be sacrificed, that spotless, unblemished one. He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed indeed. As we read the accounts of the gospel writers, how that Christ comes to the cross, he was first of all whipped. He was crowned with thorns. He was compelled to bear that heavy cross out to the place of crucifixion. He had the anguish of the world, the sin of the world pressing down upon him. He had endured sleepless nights, sleeplessness. He had endured the betrayal, the denial of dear ones to him. Those closest to him, they evaporated into the night. He was crushed in every possible way, and it was for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being, it all fell upon him and upon him only. He stands alone, that solitary figure. Though crucified among two others, yet he was the one and the only who was bearing the sin for you and for me. We were not there cheering him on. We were not there blessing him. We were not there praising his name. He stands. He hangs alone. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, we are healed. Isaiah how clearly you see what would take place 700 years after you would declare these things and how that they would ring through the centuries and even to the current of how that God is able to make clear and make plain that which is puzzling and that which is baffling. Then in verse 6, the indictment continues regarding you and regarding me. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us, and we could say each and every one of us, has turned to his own way. Here we come to a key point in the scriptures. The Bible constantly calls the people and it calls you and me to repentance. It means that we no longer pursue our own pursuits, that we no longer go in our own vain efforts to seek satisfaction wherever it is to be found aside from God. All of us have gone astray. We have all gone in our own pursuits. We have all gone after vain glory. We have gone to seek those things which will not satisfy, which will not slake the thirst, which will not satisfy the hunger of our souls. All of us have wandered in our own way, like sheep that have gone astray on the hills, wandering down this path, checking it out, and then coming back and checking out another, rather than returning to the God who has created us and loved us with an everlasting love. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each and every one of us has turned to his own way. We hear the words, we hear the call of God's voice. Where are you? Will you not return to me? Will you not in repentance make that 180 degree turn and come back to me? but we continue to wander even as God continues to pursue us, the good and the great and the glorious shepherd coming after the lamb that had foolishly gone astray. All of us like sheep, all of us. There is none righteous, no, not one. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord, the great God of heaven, the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. 
What a great and glorious Savior this is. The one who comes from the splendor of heaven, not simply into this world, but to be degraded, to be despised, to be mocked, to be misunderstood, to be the sin bearer for you and for me. Truly, we praise him rightly. Truly, he deserves all the honor. This one who is declared to be king of kings, to be Lord of lords, so treated. Oh, would you not hear the call of God's voice that you turn in repentance and come to him, that you honor him and that you glorify him, that you lift up his name on high and that you not only use your lips, but that you use your whole life to magnify him today and every day. Yes, there's room at the cross Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.